in this series of videos on drafting pleading and appearances let us see the drafting of notices it could be a notice to the board meeting or else it could be an at a notice to the general meeting and then the minutes of the meeting and then drafting of various resolutions under the companies act if you have not yet subscribed to our channel kindly subscribe to our channel and if you like the video kindly press the like button and also share it with your friends now even before we actually start drafting certain things like it could be a notice or else it could be a uh, resolution or else it could be the minutes uh, first we will have to understand the law only after understanding the law it will be much more easier for us to draft those things so here two things are involved one is the procedural law as well as the substantive law the procedural law is how you write etc etc and then what you are supposed to write and when you are supposed to write those things are given under the substantive law now let us assume the annual general meeting of a, a particular company will have to be convened now for that you will have to uh invite the directors i mean you will have to invite the shareholders for the meeting so when do you convene the meeting is the question now now the act says that at least 21 clear days notice will have to be given or it can be conducted at a shorter notice provided the consent to it is given by the 100% of the shareholders or else 95% of the shareholders as a case may be so this is given under the substantive law so when you are writing or when you are drafting a notice now let us assume that you want to convene the annual general meeting on 30th of september 2020 now why do you convene the, the annual general meeting on 30th of september 2020 because again there is one more substantive law which says that when you are supposed to conduct the annual general meeting i mean apart from the first annual general meeting it says that within the within 6 months from the closure of the financial year you are supposed to conduct the annual general meeting now closure of the financial year normally happens on 31st of march each year unless the financial year happens i mean the calendar year happens to be the financial year uh, otherwise it is the 31st of march from there within 6 months happens to be the 30th of september so normally the due date is 30th of september they do not say that you will have to convene the annual general meeting on 30th of september it merely says that you will have to convene it on or before 30th of september that is before the closure of i mean within 6 months from the closure of the financial year so now let us assume that you are convening the annual general meeting on 30th of september so you are inviting the members to attend the meeting now to attend to convene the meeting you require at least 21 clear days and along with that you should also add 48 hours if at all you are sending the notice through post so let us assume that it is 25 days so if the meeting happens to be on 30th of september so on 4th or 5th of september you will have to convene the annual general meeting so the notice should be dated on 4th or 5th then you can convene the annual general meeting on 30th of september if the meeting or if the notice is dated like 15th of september you cannot say that you are convening the annual general meeting on 30th of september unless it happens to be the convening through a shorter notice so if it is through a shorter notice naturally you can say that you are convening the agm on 30th of september by giving a 10 days notice or else 15 days of notice so this is the basic law that you are supposed to or expected to know now how does a notice i mean what what is the purpose of the notice your notice is you are in writing you are inviting the person to attend the meeting now why he has to attend the meeting because there are certain agenda items so there could be there are certain items which will have to be discussed in the meeting for that purpose you are inviting the director if it happens to be the board meeting or if you are inviting the shareholder if it happens to be the general meeting again it could be an annual general meeting or else it could be a extraordinary general meeting now for to now let us take up only the annual general meeting in annual general meeting normally we have this ordinary business and special business now what is an ordinary business again we are looking at only the substantive law then we come to the drafting portion of the notice we know that what is an ordinary business there are four business in short i call it as adda adda is a d d a that is a stands for one and then d again stands for something else and then the d stands for something else and a stands for something else now what is this adda it says Ap approval of the annual accounts is a then appointment of the directors who are retiring by rotation that happens to be the d directors then declaration of dividend that happens to be the d again and then the Uh, appointment of the statutory auditor again that happens to be the a so these four businesses we call it as the ordinary business and in the annual general meeting any business apart from these four businesses that is apart from these four ordinary businesses we call it as a special business now what does the point of law say whenever there is a special business then you require to attach an explanatory statement so it means that for an ordinary business you don't have to attach the explanatory statement now what is the logic for this attachment of explanatory statement it is very simple 
Now, when, now let us assume that I am your regular teacher. Every day I don't have to come and say that I am Rajesh, I am a practicing company secretary, I have practiced for 10 years, I was an advocate, etc., etc. It is not required because you know. Once I have told you, it means that you know that. So similarly, the ordinary businesses will be transacted every year. So I don't have to say the approval of accounts, why it is required, Appro appointment of the statutory auditor, why it is required, because already you know what is it. So apart from this, any other business in an annual general meeting, it becomes a special business. Like for example, if you are increasing the authorized share capital of the company, it is not an ordinary business. If you are taking it up in the um, annual general meeting, naturally that becomes a special business. So then you will have to say that why you are taking up increase of authorized share capital for that why you are increasing is given in the explanatory statement. In short, explanatory statement is nothing but a statement which explains why you are taking up a particular item of uh, business. So that is called as an explanatory statement. Now, how does the notice, uh, I mean, uh, what are the contents of the notice? Naturally, the contents of the notice is you will have to say what is the kind of meeting. Now, I am talking only about the annual general meeting. So, naturally, you have to say that it is an annual general meeting and which which year, that is, uh, whether it is a fourth annual general meeting or whether it is a fifth annual general meeting, tenth annual general meeting, etc. So, you are telling what is the kind of meeting. The second thing is the date on which you are proposing to conduct the meeting, like 30th of September, and what is the day on which that the day on which you are conducting the meeting. So, the date should be there, the day should be there. And then for the members to come for the meeting, you should also specify the time of the meeting and where they are supposed to come will be given at the uh, place of the meeting. So, what you are supposed to say, what is the kind of meeting? It could be a board meeting, it could be a general meeting, annual general meeting, extraordinary general meeting or else it could be a committee meeting or else it could be a, com a committee meeting of the CSR committee, audit committee, nomination and remuneration committee, it could be anything. So, what is the kind of meeting? Meeting. And then what is the day and date on which you are conducting the meeting, the place at which you are conducting the meeting and the time at which the members are, uh, the members are expected to uh, come for the meeting. So, these things will have to be given in the notice. So, in short, you can say that notice is hereby given that the fifth annual general meeting. Now, how do you know that this is what you are supposed to say? You keep on looking at the same document over a period of time. Naturally, it comes to your mind. So, you say that notices hereby given that the fifth annual general meeting of the members of the company will be held on the 30th day of September 2020 on Wednesday at 10, at 10 a.m. at the registered office of the company. Now, why at the registered? Because the annual general meeting will have to be conducted at the registered office of the company or at some other place where the registered office of the company is situated. So, you say where you are going to conduct the meeting. Now, why you are conducting the meeting? To transact the following businesses. Now, what are the following businesses? Naturally, in an, in an annual general meeting, there are two kinds of business. One is the ordinary business and then the special business. Now, let us not look at this special business. Now, what are the ordinary business? Adda, A, D, D, A. So, let us assume point number one or the business number one is approval of accounts. You say that the financial uh, statement of the company for the financial year ended on 31st March 2020 needs to be adopted because there you are not going to approve. It will be approved in the board meeting. There it will only be an adoption by the shareholders of the company. And then the appointment of the statutory auditor. Now, you know that appointment will have to be done for a period of five years. And let us assume that if it happens to be the fifth year where the statutory auditor's appointment comes to an end, then you take up the reappointment of the statutory auditor or you are going for the appointment of some other statutory auditor. So, naturally, again, that also happens to be an ordinary business. And then retirement of directors by rotation, if it happens to be a public limited company, private limited company, not required unless the article specifies. So, so and then the... Uh, appointment of the uh, uh, declaration of the dividend. If at all the company has made some profits and it, it would like to declare some dividend wins, then it will be taken up in the annual general meeting under the heading ordinary business. And if at all any other special business is there, so naturally that will have to be, that should also be mentioned under the heading special business, what is the kind of business. And naturally if it happens to be a special business, you should also mention the resolution that you are taking up for consideration. And if it is a special business, then the explanatory statement will have to be given, which gives the details as to why that particular business is taken up, whether it will be beneficial to the company or it will not be beneficial to the company, whether any of the directors or else the key managerial personnel are interested in that particular uh, item of business or not, those things will have to be given in the explanatory statement. So, this is the framework of law which says that what you are supposed to do. 
then how you are supposed to draft we we understand those things over a period of time that is you keep on drafting notices then you know that this is what is what has to be mentioned in a notice now let us take up some other simple uh, thing like drafting of a resolution now before we take up drafting of a resolution we'll have to understand why we are taking up the drafting of a resolution now let us assume that it is the appointment of a director if a person has to be appointed as a director then it can be done only in a general meeting because only if he is appointed in the general meeting we call that person as a director whereas if the person is appointed in the board meeting we don't call him as a director but we call him as an additional director and then the additional director would be holding office only till the conclusion of the ensuing agm that is the coming annual general meeting so this first we will have to understand or we will have to keep in mind now let us assume that we are going to appoint a person as an additional director so if it is an additional director which is the meeting that we will have to convene it happens to be the board meeting and when we are supposed to i mean how many days of notice will have to be given it is seven clear days plus 48 hours if you are sending the notice through post so you are sending the notices to all the directors requesting them to attend the board meeting at so and so place at so and so time uh, to discuss the following matters here let us assume that there is only one matter to be discussed and that happens to be the appointment of xyz mr xyz as an additional director now this matter has been taken up in the board meeting and then the board unanimously passes a resolution approving the uh, appointment of that particular person as an additional director now what would be the resolution then the resolution is these things are like there are certain things which are standard and then you will have to uh, fill up certain details to con to convey what you actually want to say now what is a dear your what is the thing that you are doing you are actually appointing a person as an additional director so we say resolved that mr xyz within the bracket you can mention is din it is always preferred mr xyz holding so and so din b and this year by because it is through this resolution that you are appointing that particular person as an additional director so mr xyz b and this year by that is through this resolution b and this year by appointed as an additional national director of the company then resolved for the now you know that once a person is appointed as an additional director you will have to inform the registrar of companies how do you inform the registrar of companies through which particular through which form you inform the registrar of companies you inform him inform the registrar of companies through form dir 12 so if you know that you are you are doing it through form dir 12 you can say resolved further that because the dir form has to be digitally signed by somebody else for that you will have to authorize one of the directors to digitally digitally sign it so you say mr 1 2 director holding din b and is here by authorized to digitally sign and submit to form dir 12 with the registrar of companies now let us assume since we have been doing the same thing we know which is the form uh, where you have to file it um uh, din etc those things now let us assume that as a student you cannot remember all those things because we we are in practice we keep doing the same thing time day in day out so we know what is the form now as a student you may not remember what is the form then what do you write instead of writing form dir 12 you can merely write prescribed form so if you do not know what is the form you can write prescribed form because act also says prescribed form now where it is prescribed it is prescribed under the rules regulations etc so you don't have to remember the form you can merely say resolved further that mr 1 2 3 director b and is hereby authorized to file the prescribed form with whom suddenly you forget that it has to be filed with the registrar of companies you start thinking whether it has to be filed with income tax department then again you don't have to write the uh, i mean um, uh, registrar of companies or uh, in, uh, or the income tax department and uh, let it not go wrong you can merely write that it has to be filed with the prescribed authority like what is it what is the resolution the resolution is mr so and so resolved that mr so and so b and is here by appointed as an additional director this you cannot i mean this you cannot write it as a prescribed thing because you are supposed to know if it is a board meeting then it is only an additional director if it is a general meeting then he can be appointed as a director so in the board meeting naturally it is an additional director so you write resolved that mr xyz b and is here by appointed as an additional director of the company then you have to file certain returns with the registrar of companies you can write form d ar 12 if you remember if you do not remember you can write resolved further that the prescribed form written document etc whatever you want you can write b 
uh, uh, result that Mr. So and so be authorized to digitally sign and file the written or the prescribed written, prescribed form, prescribed document with the registrar of companies. And again, if you do not remember that it is a registrar of companies, you can write with the prescribed authority. So there ends the resolution. So once you are able to understand these things, then drafting becomes much more easier. Now we have seen how to draft a notice. Notice is you have to write when you are what what is the kind of meeting that you are doing, what is the kind of uh, when uh, you will have to mention what is the date on which you are convening the meeting, the place, time and who are all the people who are entitled to attend the meeting and what is the items of business that will be transacted in the meeting. So for this more than drafting you will have to know the substantive law. Once you are thorough with the substantive law then drafting becomes much more easier. Then we come to the drafting of minutes portion. Minutes it is very, now some people call it as minute, it is not a minute, it is actually minute. Minute means what is happening every minute in the meeting, that is why we call it as a minute. So in simple terms you can write what is happening in the minute, in the minutes, like what is happening in the board meeting that will be translated in the minutes. So in the minutes you are supposed to write certain things like secretarial standards prescribes that you will have to mention who are the directors who are present, then who are the, uh, if it happens to be a shareholders meeting you should also mention how many members were present and then whether any proxies were present, whether uh, the total number of members who were present, whether quorum is satisfied, whether quorum is not satisfied or if it is urgent why it is urgent, then who are the directors who are in favor of the resolution and who are the directors who are against a particular resolution. So all these things will have to be mentioned. In simple terms, you can write what is happening in the meeting. There are certain formalities which have to be complied with and once you know what are those formalities, then it becomes easier for you to draft the minutes. Now let us take a very simple board meeting minutes. Now board meeting, first you write it is the minutes of the board meeting, the 10th board meeting of the company held on so and so date at so and so place etc etc. Now once that portion is completed, the next portion is who are the directors who are present and who are the directors who are absent. So you write Mr. 1, Mr. 2, Mr. 3, Mr. 4 etc were present, Mr. 5 was absent for the meeting. Under the previous act that is under the Companies Act of 1956, a director would be disqualified from continuing as a director if he was absent for four consecutive meetings without obtaining the leave of absence. Now what is this leave of absence? Leave is nothing but a permission. So if you are not present for the meeting, first you will have to write to the chairman and then tell him that why you will not be present for the meeting. So that is called as leave of absence. So under the earlier act, if you are absent for all consecutive four board meetings in a year without leave of absence, then you automatically get disqualified from holding the position of the director. But under the Companies Act of 2013, it is not there. If you are absent for all the board meetings which are conducted in a year, whether it is with leave of absence or without leave of absence, that is you have taken the permission to draft, to uh, permission not to be present or you have not taken, it doesn't make any difference, you will be disqualified. So you write who are the directors present and who are the directors absent. Now what is the next thing? Let us take only one agenda item. The next agenda item happens to be the appointment of an additional director. Now this particular thing will have to be taken up for discussion and then it will have to be passed as a resolution. Now before you pass it as a resolution, naturally you will have to discuss. So you write that this particular item of business that is appointment of so and so as an additional director was placed before the board meeting and then all the directors who were present in the board meeting discussed the pros and cons of appointing that particular person as a director. Then naturally there will be some positive views, there will be some negative views. It is not necessary that you will have to enter the uh, enter all those things unless it is like very important that it is going to change the, um, the, the legal implications of the uh, minutes. Otherwise it is not required. So merely you can write they discussed and after discussion what, what was the decision? They decided that they will appoint a so and so person as an additional director. How they will appoint that particular person as an additional director? By passing the following resolution. So here you can say one person proposed and then the other person seconded. Normally we write it in a general meeting. You can also write it in a board meeting. You can say Mr. X proposed the appointment of Mr. 1, 2, 3 and then Mr. Y seconded the proposal which was passed by I mean, which was given by Mr. X and then the resolution, the following resolution was placed before the meeting for uh, for a decision. Now what is that resolution which we have already seen resolved that Mr. So and so B and is there appointed as an additional director. 
resolved further that so and so person be authorized to digitally sign and submit the form with the registrar of company. So once it is done, then you say this particular resolution was passed with unanimous majority or with the majority, simple majority, whatever it is. Then you say that the resolution has been passed. Now let us assume the meter, the meeting has ended. Now once the meeting is ended, naturally you will have to thank the chairman because the chairman was present there and then he made sure that there is no, uh, I mean there is no fighting between the members, directors. He, he was was there to run the meeting in a very smooth manner then what do you say the you, you thank the chairman now that we call it as vote of thanks so you say since there is no other business to transact because the meeting was called only for the appointment of an additional director since there is no other business to be transacted the meeting ended with a vote of thanks to the chair now it is the act very clearly says that it has to be signed by the chairman of the meeting and it should also be dated. So once the minutes is prepared, then it has to be signed by the chairman of the meeting and then it should also be dated. So once you are able to understand the substantive law and also the procedural law, then the drafting becomes much more easier because the law is, you are complying with the law. Then how you write it, it depends on uh, your skill of writing. So in drafting, it is not necessary that you have got extremely good drafting skill, but you should also know the law which says how you are supposed to do, uh, draft, what you are supposed to draft and when you are supposed to draft all these things. Once you know all these things, then drafting becomes much more easier. So here we have seen how to draft a notice and then how to draft a minutes. I hope that it is clear. If you want to learn more about the subject drafting, pleading and appearances, kindly fill the Google form given in the description box below. If you have got any comments or questions, kindly leave it in the comment section below. For more courses from Excel Academy, kindly visit excelacademy.com.